<sighs> yeah, that's all I had for a cool intro. Hey guys, Reese from StudyNova.com and today we're going to be talking about some things you might need to know for creativity, action, slash activity, and service, or in other words, CAS. Now we all know CAS is, or at least I hope we all know that CAS is something that you need to complete in IB to actually successfully finish and get your IB diploma. Now with CAS, it's kind of out of the way. You don't need to necessarily fret over it so quickly, but if you procrastinate on it too long, at least from my experience and from what I've seen, a lot of students have procrastinated on it into their second year, and that's generally speaking the year where the internal assessments, the extended essay deadline, the TUK deadlines, everything starts to pile up, and when you've got CAS to top it all off, it becomes a bit of a nightmare to manage. So, a lot of the tips I'm going to give today are from my own personal experience in how I managed to get my CAS done, or at least the minimum, the bare minimum requirements for CAS done before the end of my first year, or before half of my first year in IB had even been finished. So, let's get straight into it. The first tip I have for you guys is to get CAS done quick. Go into IB if you're a first student or if you've just started with the mentality that you need to get CAS done quickly. It's very, very easy to say, I'll just do CAS later. It's not necessary now. There's no pressure to do it now. I'll just think about it later and I'll take it easy. It's very easy to go through that route. But on the flip side of that, you could easily use all that free time you have at the very beginning of IB to incrementally build up all those CAS activities and all those reflections and the logs that you have to do in Manage Back and build it up to the point where you won't even need to think twice about it when you're in your second year or towards the end of your first year. Now, if you're a second year IB student, you might need to do a bit of hustle. You might need to prioritize getting CAS done because the quicker you get that done, the quicker you'll be able to stop worrying about getting it done and the faster you'll be able to focus on all the stuff you need to do in your second year that is a lot more urgent than doing extracurricular stuff like, I don't know, doing sports or doing charity work. I'm not sure. But a lot of those will be very time consuming and time is not going to be a lot of what you have, especially towards the end of your first year and going into your second year. So getting cast out of the way early is the mentality that you need and the first tip that I need to give you when it comes to successfully completing cast and getting it done seriously. Now the second tip I have for you is the way you approach cast activities. Now when I was doing my cast and I was picking activities and stuff like that, I wasn't so selective. I essentially signed up for everything that I possibly could. Now this might vary between schools, but in my school, our cast coordinator was constantly coming up with all these activities and all these events that we could participate in and get cast hours and cast credits for to put into our journals on Manage Back. Now I signed up for all of those without a second thought. That was my approach to cast. That was the second mentality I had. I had a dual mentality where I needed to get cast done and I would just sign up for everything without a second thought. If I saw an opportunity to do something, I just went for it. I just signed up without a second thought and I went and did it. Because the less you think about the activities you need to do for cast, the less excuses you'll be able to make for yourself to not eventually do the cast. Once you've signed up for that activity, you need to make sure that you're actually going to go do it and you've got the can-do mentality instead of the oh, I'll do it later or I don't feel like a mentality because the less time you give yourself to think about it, the less likely it is that you won't show up or you won't do it. So that's tip number two. Tip number two, sign up for as much as you possibly can and for as many different categories of the three creativity, action or activity uh, and then the service elements of CAS. Now my third tip is to kind of make it easier on yourself and do hybrids. So what I did in IB was I always tried to make sure that a lot of my activities I could kind of classify as two of the three because my minimum requirements in IB were that I needed to do five of each. I needed to do five activities or action based uh, cast activities. I needed to do five creativity based activities and five service based activities. Now I tried to mix and match them. So for example, I volunteered at a Dubai marathon event. Now that involved me going out to the track and handing out water to the different participants and the specialized water for like the specialized runners because there were those sections. And what I did was I classified that as action or activity and service because I was making sure I was serving the activity. I was providing a service for the community of marathon runners 
and then I was also, you know, getting into action. I was also running around, organizing things, and physically being active with handing out and distributing bottles and stuff like that. So doing more activities like that will easily fit the bare minimum requirements that you need. Now, I'm not sure if they've changed that. This was the cast stuff that I did, and these were the tactics that I used. Now, if the minimum requirement still stands that you need to do like five or a certain number of each different element of cast, then it would be a lot more efficient to do as many hybrid activities as you can to fix that entire thing. So instead of doing 15 total activities, five for each, you would easily just do five, hypothetically speaking, with all three creativity, activity, and service elements. So to summarize everything I've said so far, tip number one is go in with a can-do mentality of getting everything done as quickly as possible. You need to ensure that you're in this state of mind that tells you that the cast is urgent, you need to get it out of the way so you can save yourself time later on. And trust me, that'll pay out in dividends later down the line. Number two, is to sign up for everything. Just be a maniac, sign up for all the cast activities you possibly can, but within reason, do as much as you can so you can get it all done as fast as possible. And then tip number three so far is that you need to try to create hybrid activities or do hybrid activities to be more efficient with your cast completion. Now the final tip I'm going to give you is regarding the project. Now the project doesn't have to be some grand, amazing, creative, unthinkable project. It can be because I remember in my school there were a few students who actually went to Nepal in their summer or something like that or a third world country and created a school or built a small school in that very very poor country. Now I'm not saying that's what you need to do. You need to go to some unknown country in the world, some very poor country and then build a school. Now it would be great if you could do that. That would be very amazing for your self-esteem, your personal development, as well as CAS, but you don't have to do something as incredible as that. In my personal experience, all I did was create a table tennis tournament with another guy. So that ended up being my CAS project. It was very simple. We just printed off a bunch of certificates, like fancy ones, to give out to the different players that had won first, second, or third place. And we bought one, we bought a trophy for uh, the winning player. And that probably took the span of around one or two weeks, the entire tournament. It took about a week to set up, and then the second week was really implementation. So we actually started the table tennis tournament. We had a couple days, different rounds, and we divided up the winning players to compete against each other. And then at the end of the week, we had a small ceremony where we handed out the trophy, took pictures, and that was it. That only took around two weeks. It didn't take too much to organize, but that's the point I'm trying to make. The cast project doesn't have to be this insane amount of work that you need to do and allocate so many months to it doesn't have to be so big it just has to be a little bit of a project that you organize on your own or you co-organize with someone else so those are the four main tips i have for you today is that number one get it out of the way as fast as possible trust me it'll pay out you will thank yourself later for getting it all done do as many as you can just be a maniac sign up for everything the third one is to do hybrids to be more efficient and the fourth one don't be afraid of the cast project. You don't have to make the cast project so big, so marvelous. It doesn't have to be something massive, but it does have to be started and organized by you. And it has to be a little bit more significant than your regular cast activities. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope this tip video has been useful for you. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Check out Study Nova for some more articles about cast and business economics and English while you're at it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.